a ghost story per sale, but there are a couple involved. It's much more, get this, a love story. Oh! <laughs> I'll keep coaching. There was a man in Germany, his name is Karl Tanzler. He proclaimed himself to be Count Karl von Kossel because Count makes things sound cooler. It worked for Dracula, it worked for Chocula, it worked for that guy on Sesame Street. You're just gonna call me Count J, but at the end of the night, don't fight it, it's natural, just let it happen. Count Karl von Kossel owned a machine shop over there in Germany who produced radiology equipment, x-ray machines. Made a lot of money doing this because x-ray technology was the absolute pinnacle of medical technology at the time. He also had a beautiful wife, two lovely daughters, and was absolutely miserable with his life. The reason for this is because the ghost of his dead grandmother was poking into his room every single night since he was eight years old when she died at St. Carl. You will be absolutely miserable for the rest of your life. Until you marry this woman and she will pull a dark drape off of a shadowy figure that stood next to her. To reveal a beautiful Cuban woman. Long, dark hair, big brown eyes, who can that spare skin? Eventually he started to believe her. I am going to stress that word eventually because in 1927, when Count Karl von Kossel came to America to pick up Cuban chicks, just saying there were many in Germany, <laughs> you look like this. <clears throat> Some of you folks may think you see a familiar face here. If you are thinking Freud and want therapy, you got issues. Get it? <laughs> All right, fine. If this picture makes you want fried chicken, <laughs> you are actually worse off, believe it or not. Or if you are like me and pointing out even remote likenesses in the crowd. I'm sorry, but you guys just look at this guy for like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I've been 20 years on him, he's on it. You're gonna hate me in a minute. He's like, I'm not waiting a whole minute. Carl comes over, he leaves his wife in case it's starting new in the North Florida port they came in at. He, on the other hand, ran as far south as we can get, as close to Cuba as he can get. Sunny little town, 90 miles from Havana. Carl? Yeah. Yes. Or a smart crowd, too, I like. He has a job at the local hospitals and x-ray tech because he knew the machinery so well. Like I said, pinnacle of medical technology at the time, he was revered as the most brilliant doctor on staff because he knew the most brilliant technology on property. One day a girl walks into him for a second opinion, beautiful Cuban girl, long dark hair, big brown eyes, ruby red lips, fair skin. Her name was Elena Hoyos. Carl instantly recognized her as the woman his grandmother had intended for him. Carl instantly fell in love with this girl. All right, I'm getting the funny looks already. I understand I said she was a beautiful woman. It's 1927. Things have gotten better. <laughs> Photography, for what? Makeup, plastic surgery, Photoshop, that's a big one. Two problems with Carl instantly falling for this girl. One, she's married. Two! Not a big problem. <laughs> she has tuberculosis. Absolutely fatal for the time. She has two years left to live, quote, any doctor. Carl the X-ray tech promises her more. Says, come to me, Petrini, you'll live a long and healthy life. Come to me, Petrini, you'll beat this disease. So she does. She starts coming to him twice a week for treatment. He starts treating her for free. Her husband runs away with another woman because there's no use betting on a dead horse. Why would you laugh at that? <laughs> you are sick. I like it. It's wrong. Watch out. <laughs> Carl sees you in the phone saying this chance. That's making his move. Keeps on treating her for free. Now he's also showering her with gifts, writing her German love songs and poetry. She is used to Spanish love songs and poetry. One of those is an extremely romantic language when used right. I'm gonna let you guys pick. Carl does not get from the time of day from this girl. Up until two years go by, something funny happens. She dies. She has her first funeral at the Dean Lopez Funeral Home, gray building, white shutters you see across the street. Those of you caught that literal mark of mine, that was foreshadowing the movement for us. Carl paid for the entire funeral, including the catering for 300 people who showed up. She's a very well-liked woman here on this island. He also paid every professionally embalmed head to toe, which was very expensive, almost unheard of at the time. He wanted her beauty to last forever, because he then paid for a special casket to be built with a clear top so he could still view her. And a mausoleum put up over the Key West Cemetery in the middle of the island, with a door he had a key to and a window he could look through. Goes down to visit her every single day. He reads to her, sings to her, talks to her. Up until, according to his personal journals, she starts talking back. They have regular conversations over there by the crib. Then one day she sings him a love song, a very specific Spanish love song. Translates the two words in English, black wedding. 
Carl does exactly what he has to do. Goes back down to the crypt. Later that night, we know nobody else is around. He drags the Gabby with her body inside it back to his house on Smathers Beach. Starts reconstructing her. He makes her face and skin out of Marchison's wax and plaster. Gives her glass eyes, fashions her real hair into a wig. And then, using piano wire, he puts her bones together so she's poseable. Slips her in a wedding dress. Puts a diamond ring on her finger in a very private ceremony with no guest pet. We need to retreat now. <laughs> Alright, the guest thing doesn't usually get it. Alright, how about this? After the honeymoon! <laughs> I would like to tell you that was one of my jokes. I really can't thank credit for that one. Uh, the reason I'll use that line on our tour every night is because this marriage was constipated. That's the reaction I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Have you like, oh my god. Or else you're like, what's that mean? <laughs> tell you when you're older. <laughs> Carl and Elena lived together as man and wife for seven years. Seven years of perfectly wedded bliss. Everything that it entails save for a joint tax return. Seven years later, his friends are the ones who start suspecting him because he keeps on talking about his beautiful wife, Elena, how good she is to him. They never once get to meet this miracle girl. They start following him around, hoping to get a glimpse of her. What they find instead is Carl buying lots of women's clothing. Not very strange for QS, I understand that, but he is also buying lots of feminine soaps and perfumes because one thing's for sure love stinks. Love stinks! <laughs> <laughs> who was it? Who was it? I want a high five. Who started it? <laughs> when the cops catch wind of this, they bust out Carl's door. They find Carl in bed with Elena Hoyos. They arrest the man, red handed, so to speak, on grave robbing and grave desecration charges because there were no necrophilia laws at the time. We didn't think we'd need them. Surprise! Welcome to Key West. <laughs> His case is instantly thrown out as soon as it crosses the bench because the statute of limitations on grave robbery at the time in the state of Florida was two years. They'd already been married for seven. Carl is heard on his way down the courtroom steps saying, can I have my wife back now? This prompts the judge to put him a full psychiatric evaluation, obviously. But he passes it with flying colors. He's absolutely as sane as everyone else on the side. <laughs> he Fair enough. He is forced to leave the island having the potential harm to society. He lives up the rest of his years up on his sister's ranch in Zephyr Hills, Florida. Quick question for you folks. Where do you guys get your drinking water from? Zephyr Hills. Oh. Necrophilia Free since 1949. <laughs> we think. Ish. Elena's body was brought back to the Dean Lopez funeral home for her second funeral. That's right, most people just get the one. She got two. Some would call her spoiled. There it is. 6,800 people nationwide came to view this second funeral, mainly because it was a second funeral. They don't come around all that often. It was printed in every major newspaper across the country, seeming a hell of a reason to come visit the U.S. during the Great Depression. Dude married a dead chick. Let's go check it out. I would have been here. Don't lie. Half of you would have too. That guy definitely would have. <laughs> what they came to see was this. I know she's cute, right? And she's married, that makes it dirty. <laughs> a lot of folks actually call this an improvement. Look, kids, Elena 2.0. <laughs> Still got some bugs to work out. How many tons can I I like the temple looks just like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Especially now. What, is it too soon? <laughs> I told that joke that night, got a huge laugh. Of these 6,800 people who came to see her, over 500 of them brought love letters. For Carl. Yeah. Women thought it was romantic. Huh? Undying love, girls. He yeah, already did love. Over 300 of them proposed marriage to the man, but he was still a happily married man and left the sign according to him. Now, funny thing about when he left this island, a lot of people ask me about the mausoleum. Can we go see the mausoleum? No, you cannot. Because it blew up due to a time bomb the day after Carl left. It is still an open case. The big mystery. We have no idea 